G'day guys, my name is Ben Cat and welcome to the channel and today we'll be talking about the Audio Engine A2 Plus speakers. I've just received these speakers after ordering them four and a half months ago. I'm not sure if it's COVID-19 causing chaos, but they took a hell of a long time to arrive. Now for me, I'm actually upgrading my speakers from the Logitech Z2300s, and that was a really popular high quality speaker quite a long time ago now. They are definitely out of production. I think I've actually owned these maybe 10, maybe even 15 years, give or take, off the top of my head. They've been a great set of speakers that have done me well for a long time, and they just won't bloody break, so props to Logitech, you've done a great job. I just thought after that amount of time, I was due for an upgrade for speakers. These guys have done me well, but I thought I'd just do something to freshen the place up effectively. Now, what originally attracted me to these to begin with was the look of the speaker. I really like that timeless retro look of these speakers, and I think they'll still look fantastic 10, 20, 30 years into the future, maybe. I have seen elsewhere there's some competing speaker brands that have some pretty out there designs that I just don't know will actually go the distance in terms of looking good that long into the future. If you're enjoying this video too, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel, it is greatly appreciated. And if you do want some more information, go ahead and check out the written description on this video because I have added a bit more information there. And of course, if you leave a comment, I'll do my best to respond as well. These Audio Engine A2 speakers really have a premium vibe to them, and I guess the experience and understanding of that really starts when you take them out of the box. So before I speak any further, let's just jump into a quick unboxing video and we'll carry on from there. Alright, here's everything that's from the box. Obviously, we've got our two speakers here. We've got a PowerPoint adapter. Obviously, the Australian power plug. I imagine that would just be swapped out for whatever country you're from. Uh, we've got a headphone cable here as well. Stereo, 3.5mm. Uh, USB cable. Some speaker wire. And just some booklets and stuff. And that's all there is besides the nice bags that these speakers came in. Well, there you go, guys. The unboxing was interesting, wasn't it? Like, there was a lot of extra bits in there that were certainly not needed, like the bags over all the parts and accessories and the speakers and things like that. I don't know what I'm going to do with those bags now, but um, I've just popped them back in the box for the time being. But it really did help convey that sense that this is a high-quality speaker. And when you pick it up, too, the speaker weighs a lot. While I was setting these speakers up too, I did appreciate like the speaker connectors on the back and other bits and pieces. Everything has a really strong feel to it and it's overall really sturdy. I personally really like that all the controls are on the back of the speaker, which makes the front look much more clean and simple. So I guess the engineers at Audio Engine had to decide whether the left or right speaker was the master speaker, which of course would have all the controls and inputs and outputs and things like that on it. And for my system behind me, uh, I was really hoping that the speaker on the right would be the master speaker. But unfortunately, the left speaker is the uh, master speaker that has all those extra bits and pieces on it that you need to set it all up. So for me, with the distance of this desk that you can see behind me, the left speaker actually in its best position is too far away from the computer to connect all the cables to. So I've actually had to go and get some aftermarket cabling to run to the computer, which was a bit longer than what they included in the box. A minor problem, but if you are putting these on a larger desk, just keep in mind that you might need to invest in some aftermarket cables as well. But once I set this speaker system up, that's where things started to change. And I guess now we'll jump into my overall impression of the speaker. And from the out of the box first time experience to a week later, my, my impression and experience was very, very different. I've actually still got both the speakers set up on my computer. I have the Logitech plugged into my computer with the 3.5 millimeter jack. And I have the audio engine speakers connected with the USB input. 
And that's actually been really great for me to test within a whole heap of different scenarios because I can just easily and quickly change the speaker inputs on Windows so I can easily see which speaker sounds best. And that's where, the, that's where things got interesting. So on day one, when I first started trying these speakers, the sound that came out of the Audio Engine A2 speakers was so different when compared to the Logitech speakers, I actually didn't know how to process it. I didn't know how to explain it at the time, but the Audio Engine speaker just had a completely different sound output. It was softer. I could hear noises that were kind of different, just noises were different. Um, and overall, I guess the experience in my ears just felt completely different. It was, a, it was almost like the, the sensation, not even the noise, was different with these speakers. I can't really describe it to you, but long story short, after trying them for a couple of hours on the first day, I kind of said to my partner at the time, I'm like, I don't know if I like these speakers. They are so different. I don't actually know if it's a better quality speaker or not. So what I did is I committed to only using the Audio Engine speakers for a week straight. And with that, I was listening to music, playing a couple of video games, a couple of different bits and pieces like that. And only after a week, I then switched back to the Logitech speakers. And that's when the glass shattered and I realized how much better these Audio Engine speakers were when compared to my old Logitechs. To keep it simple, the Audio Engine speakers are just rich in comparison to the Logitechs. Going back to them, I just found that they were very, very tinny. They didn't have sound where the audio engine would actually give you some level of detail. And overall, I can't describe it, but the audio engine speakers just could, it felt like they just had a lot more detail in every single note that was pushed out of that speaker. And sure, okay, the subwoofer can pump out some bass that the audio engine system simply can't, but the speakers themselves do a much better job at pumping bass out when compared to the Logitech system. So while I have lost some deep subwoofer bass, I've kind of gained more speaker bass, and I've actually found I've enjoyed that a lot more than that kind of thumping bass that really isn't necessary. On top of that, the Audio Engine has the ability to run a subwoofer, should you want to, and that can be the Audio Engine S8 subwoofer, which is an optional purchase, or you could run another subwoofer as well. And I'll definitely be thinking about investing into that as well, considering how happy I am with these speakers. So I'm certainly no audiophile, and I'm not gonna get into the tech specs and sound frequency levels and things like that. I'm just gonna say to you that when comparing these two speakers, I really found the Audio Engine system, after you adjusted to it, to be a great increase in quality. I feel like there's probably a lot of people out there that are kind of in a similar position to me. You're looking at those Logitech speakers or something in that $100 to $200 range, I guess, that is kind of listed as a good quality speaker on that manufacturer's website. And thinking about stretching or doubling that budget to the audio engine is, is a hard decision, and it certainly was for me as well, but I really did feel after committing to it that it was a very good decision. So I'm gonna jump in and do a bit of a comparison now, and I know it's no substitute for your ears, but I am gonna show you a few different scenes on my computer and record the noise that both speakers output here. Now I'm recording all this on a Sony a7R 3 camera with a Rode VideoMic Pro, so I'm hoping that I actually get a pretty good example on at least the difference in tones that you can get from both these two speakers. So I've jumped onto the YouTube audio library and I'm just gonna play through a small sample of a few different random songs I find on there and just compare the difference between these two speakers for you.
will say in those examples, I'm only running these speakers at about half their volume as well. The audio engine system has a few different inputs that you can use. So on the computer, I'm using a USB input, but you also have the typical 3.5 millimeter jack option as well. And the A2 Plus has the Bluetooth connectivity as well. Now I wanted to quickly mention the Bluetooth connectivity because I actually at this point am not too happy with it. I've run Bluetooth speakers in the past. In fact, I actually have these Logitech speakers running through the optional Bluetooth adapter that they sell for speakers as well. And my problem with the audio engine speakers is there is a very subtle occasional crackle noise that I get through these speakers when running them on Bluetooth. And I'm doing that with my Mac computer that I switch to quite frequently. It's not a prominent crackle. It's kind of like a crackling noise where you being used to your environment here, but if you were to call a friend or your partner into your room and get them to listen, they would probably say that they wouldn't hear it. But overall, whenever I'm running that on Bluetooth, there's this very, very soft crackling noise that occasionally comes through the speakers. And while there's a few things I can test, like messing around with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi signals and things like that, the long story short of it is that all my other Bluetooth devices do not have this issue today. So whether it is that cause or not, it's not something I'm overall happy with. But as I'm sure most of you know, Bluetooth is never a reliable connection and is always frustrating. I know I have problems with my keyboard and mouse frequently enough to annoy me. So I'll be mostly using these speakers with the USB input, which is the main reason I bought them. Now, the disappointing thing with a USB input, at least for me, is when I plug it into my Windows computer, Windows recognizes them as a headset, not a set of speakers. Now, it's pretty easy for me to change the icon and the description there, which is what I've done. I'm actually not sure if Windows recognizing it as a headset actually changes the sound output or things like that. But I have gone ahead and checked the difference between the 3.5 millimeter connection and the USB connection, and I can't really see there's too much of a difference there. So to kind of wrap these, to kind of wrap this up, I'm pretty happy with how these speakers are. I think they look fantastic. They're almost a timeless design. They sound significantly better than the Logitech series of speakers that at least I'm running, which is at that kind of price point that's half of what the audio engines are. And I think overall, I'm really enjoying the fact that these audio engine speakers have a few different inputs that you can use as well. All right, guys, I think it's about time to wrap this video up. So I hope you got some value out of it. And if you want to say thanks, please hit that subscribe and like button. And until then, we'll see you around for the next video. Have a good one.